All right, uh, greetings family. This is Bomani Tayemba, and welcome to our uh, Sunday conference call for our Black Star Pan-African community. And today is September 20th, and we're having a private uh, conference call dealing with the updates for the one year uh, progress and process of what we just completed from September 2019 to September 2020. And I have our attorney Richard and also our consultant Kwabna, and I'm gonna connect them in in a few minutes. I'm gonna get uh, right to the point. Uh, so what I wanna do is do a quick uh, five minute uh, overview of how we got here and, um, yeah, and then we'll just take it from there. So everything goes back to um, uh, October, November of 2018, uh, when we were looking to um, uh, build our group and take our group to a uh, setup to where we can just connect with other Pan-African groups uh, there in Ghana that has land and we connect and work together to build the kind of community that we have at this uh, very moment. Uh, so that uh, connection was a company called Garvey Town. Uh, so we was able to connect like-minded energy as far as uh, us wanting to build an independent community for us with the most important emphasis on us as a people connecting and integrating into the African society as far as uh, um, main country Ghana and then the Senate put our energy together cooperative economically. Uh, unfortunately, you know, during the time of just connecting with them, uh, you know, all the things that we talked about doing uh, for years, because I've been having these meetings uh, since 2004 uh, with uh, groups that I joined and eventually this, we started this building our fresh group under the energy of Africa for Africans in uh, 2006. Uh, but uh, what uh, the problem that we have or had with uh, Garvey Town is what I'm going to bring Richard in. It's an illegal situation to where we want to make sure that we as the individual have complete legal ownership of the land that we're getting under our 99 year lease. And also to be able to be a part of a, a company itself uh, that's registered there in Ghana and be able to just begin to build our independence in Ghana with everything being done and established in Ghana. Uh, so um, those things that uh, we couldn't uh, do with Garvey Town because they refused to register the land, they refused for us to really organize together to where us as the individuals have input in what we're developing. Uh, so that's why we have committees and things like that. And that's why we have uh, taken on the approach we have taken on. And the other thing also, we're getting to the part where everyone is gonna be starting asking about, uh, can I build this home there? Or I thought about, uh, I saw this nice design and uh, I, want, I want to have this kind of fence in my, in my, around my property and so on and so on. And it's gonna to get to the point where you have to leave it as a creative flow of energy where we can live our most incredible dreams in Africa and build the homes that we want. And if you want a garage, you want a two floor house, you want a terrace, a balcony, uh, those things were problems with them. They basically wanted to force us to live in, uh, in a bungalow uh, with no garage. And they, and they say you can have as many, you know, you can have a few different rooms and things like that. And then the worst thing of all, they explained that uh, we can choose our own builders. And then they don't try to force us to use their builders and told us we can uh, build duplex and things like that as our own investment property. And they don't want to, wanted to control that. So that's the problems we had. So our goal, um, literally, uh, once we got into the program, about several months into the program, after this dealing with those situations, the goal was just to just work as hard to get a refund as possible, and then just start a fresh process. And uh, so we worked out certain things to where we offered everybody a credit onto the next project. And uh, even though we didn't get all of the money we needed to get from Garvey Town, we got about 20% of our refund back. But, Honestly, I made it work for everyone and made sure everybody got their money. Some people decided to move on, um, which I do understand. Um, those kind of those kind of madness where things are not clear, where we can't come together and just say, hey, let's do this and let's make it work for those of us as a people or, or accommodate us. If it's not going to be that situation, people are going to walk away. So the energy that what we're talking about right now with the uh, Black Star Pan-African community was based on this, us already having a group of people or uh, from over the period of time of doing all these uh, tours to Ghana and they're saying, hey, you know, the only thing that we're missing now is number one, a better lawyer and a better consultant. So the lawyer and the consultant uh, were fired because they just, they didn't really step their game up and they, they were paid to represent us to make sure that we didn't have any bad dealings and 
Um, then, you know, certain disclosure came out later on that the land wasn't registered and they were actually behind on the payments. Their cost of what they had to pay for the land was a whole lot less than what we just completed a, a little while ago. And, um, and they literally had a, had a better deal. They had 300 acres and the, only, the things that they had, to, they had to build were a school and a medical center and a few other things and provide a few scholarships and things like that for the reduced price, like almost like a 99% uh, discount. Uh, you know, so with, uh, we, didn't want, we don't want any deal structured in our program. So we just went straight for this, the direct deal and paid for our land. So we're good, we don't have those troubles. And that's what I'm also bringing in our attorney to talk about uh, because those are the things that cause us not to progress. And it is, it has sucked the life out of me. Sometimes I look at myself and like I'm aging and I know, you know, we naturally grow older, but I was in my mid twenties when we were working on these things and years have gone by and you just, it was just hard to find the right groups of people. And then, you know, so everything that we're looking to do is to show you hundred percent transparency from receipts to uh, reports to everything that we're doing that way, everything is clear and we can trust each other because that has been a problem uh, as simple as that is. Um, so we want to create things as clean as possible. And that's why we have so much public and also private documentation of like every single conference call that we do. Uh, so nevertheless, uh, the closeout of that situation with Garvey Town is we just started just trying to do conference calls to work things out. And I stepped out of so, some of those conference calls so other members can kind of listen to what they were, they, you know, basically kind of bring their, their issues and bring the things that they wanted to them and ask for solutions. And so that was uh, literally June, uh, July of uh, last year. So uh, in August, I talked to my brother, uh, Kwabna, and I also uh, got a good referral for a good attorney, uh, Richard, which you're going to hear from in a few uh, minutes. And uh, I talked to Richard, and I told him our situation, and uh, you know, he did the, the legwork and work to get access to different uh, chiefs uh, who had land. And then also Kwabna, I sent him a few different uh, properties uh, based on our connections. So after, I, and then I had a few other people working on these projects also, because I was literally determined, because it literally just, it literally, it's one of those things that like break your heart and break you down, and you just gotta get back up and say, you just not gonna let it wear you out, because we had all our, we were literally just ready to start building and providing all the energy and, and setting up Garvey Town. So, but the best thing is that we move forward because if we can't talk together, work together and figure things out and be respectful to each other and honest with each other, especially since all of us are work very hard for our money and things like that. And then someone can't give us a report of what they spend the money on and things like that. And that was also one of the final drawback is like when we was trying to get our refund, we just said, hey, just let us know what money we spend for what and then work we just agree on you know a, a refund where I know we're gonna lose some money but even that they couldn't draft up and say hey we can present you this amount of refund and we can pay in this amount of time and we're sorry that whatever whatever didn't work out uh, it was none of those things so if you see Garvey Town is dead all over the internet that's me and the, what I do famously uh, and you know to where people don't you know to where people that are coming to deal with us in the future understand that we're just not gonna let them just deal with us a certain way so I've had Garvey Town back and forth in court twice I'm wearing them out just on the court situation and I got other tactics. Uh, so now they're trying to double up and um, putting a statement out that they're not dead, you know, but the thing of it is, you know, you have our money and we still haven't taken care of what you're supposed to take, take care of. And at the same time to the biggest thing family is a few people decided to stay at Garvey town with all the crazy stuff going and I commend them. But once they stayed months went by, they couldn't hear from them. There's no updates. There's no details and things like that. Uh, so even in that situation, uh, you can really see what they were for themselves because I'm also letting people know that I didn't sabotage them because uh, <laughs> they're basically saying I sabotaged them and took over their ideas. They had 16 years to do this and they had all of our support to do this. And when they failed, we had to move forward. And then now since we move forward, I'm sabotaging them. So everyone had a fair option to move forward with them or just get refund and go their own way or move forward with what we're building. Uh, so this is why I'm looking to be honest and be respectful and share everything as possible up front. And you can call me 24 uh, seven. As a matter of fact, my line is just literally for the people who do these kind of business with Africa tours and investment. So I could just be more focused with, with those of us that's building this uh, energy. Uh, so family, uh, I'm just proud to say that we have this progress and uh, our brother Richard, let me uh, uh, connect you in and let you introduce yourself and let you just talk about what you've been able to help us with 
on a more organized legal uh, process. All right, so Richard, when, you, when you're ready, just uh, unmute yourself and talk. All right, Good me... evening. Can you all hear me? Uh, yes, we can hear you. Oh, okay. Okay, my, my, my name is Richard, and I am the lawyer for this whole process, the acquisition of the land at Jazzy. So um, somewhere last year, somewhere last year, uh, Bomani and um, Bomani con contacted me, and then together with um, consultants, Kobna, we went to Jazzy to uh, look for a land for our intended project. Um, Fortunately, we settled on a very nice area, an area conducive for a residential apartments, that's a settlement, a community. And um, we also settled on the area, bearing in mind that um, some of you would like to have um, arable land, fertile land for your backyard gardens and stuff, you know. Um, not all um, lands are suitable for these kinds of um, backyard farming. And um, Bomani insisted that, well, in as much as the land is essentially for uh, residential apartments, that's for your community, you would um, love to have a land which can support um, a few crops, I mean, for gardening, for flowers and stuff. So um, we contacted one Nana Haiti, uh, who is the chief of Jazzy. And then um, we started negotiations with him. Um, initially, we, we started with him on the acquisition of a 15 acre land. So we, 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 we had several discussions with him back and forth, and finally we agreed on the way to go. Um, as uh, the lawyer for Black Star Pan-African Community, my uh, primary objective is to make sure that I represent you with respect to um, the negotiations and the acquisition of the land, everything that has to do with the acquisition of the land and to make sure that you have a good deal and whatever objective the community or the group has set for itself will be realized. So um, I, I and the consultants, um, Kabna, we engaged the chief and at the end of the day, um, we were shown a land. But um, the first thing we did when we were shown the land was to conduct a search. And buying a land, you have to um, ascertain whether the person who wants to lease the said land to you has legal title to the land. So we conducted a search at um, a government office called Lands Commission. And because Jazzy falls under central region of the Republic of Ghana, we had to go and conduct the, the search at Cape Coast Lands Commission. So the results came and it was clear that um, Nana had legal rights to lease the land to the community. That's Black Star Pan-African community. So uh, we went ahead to execute what we call an MOU to spell out um, the terms of payments and then how we would go about um, securing the land. So uh, a, a memorandum of understanding was executed between Nana and um, uh, officers or the leaders of um, Black Star Pan-African community. Um, I drafted the necessary document, sent it to Bomani, 
and then they also vetted whatever the clauses were they okayed it they they executed their parts and then um, emailed it back to me i sent it to the chief that's nana haiti and then he also exe uh, executed his part of the mou so at that point we had a valid and a binding agreement with respect to the land and it spelled out how um, everything around the land including even payments so at the, the along the way i had to draft the 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 lease agreement that's the the formal lease agreement which is a legal instrument um to 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 show that we the land the 15 acre land had been leased to you with the description of the land and coordinates and everything so um, I drafted the lease agreement um, between Nana, Nana Haiti and Black Star Pan-African Community, um, similar to what we did with the Memorandum of Understanding. I sent it to Bumani for the group to look at it, and they, they were comfortable with the lease agreement, and then they executed their parts, sent it back to us, um, and then Nana and his elders also signed their portion. So at that point, the, the lease agreements covering 15 acre land at Jazzy was completed. Um, after, after Nana and his uh, elders signed their portion, I scanned everything and then emailed it back to Bomani and Co. So um, the said documents, the legally completed lease agreements, duly executed by both parties um, with the, um, the lawyer acting as the, the a witness for the said transaction, I acted as a witness for um, Black Star Pan-African Community because uh, obviously I am your legal rep, your legal representative here. So um, as we speak now, the said document is complete. Um, a copy has been given to Bumani and I'm sure maybe um, in due course or if you've not uh, seen it already, it's the said document is, is is available for, for, for your perusa at any point in time. Now, now that we have completed the, the identification, the uh, survey work, and then the acquisition of the 15 acres, um, we have to take steps to do what we call registration. Registration essentially means that now that you have a lease from, from the chief, the chief has leased a 15 acre of Jersey land to the group. It is yours. You have a lease agreement. You have every legal right to commence development of the land, to start construction of your, your preferred uh, apartments or buildings or whatever on the said 15 acres. Now you have to take steps and then register the 15 acre land with the lands commission of the republic of ghana because as it stands now the 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 the, the land has been acquired duly acquired by the community but the government is not aware that's to 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 break it down the government is not aware and by law once you acquire land you have to take steps to register it in your interest to register the, the said land with the government so there are processes to be followed you would you would have to go to the the cape coast lands commission because as i said earlier jersey falls within the central region of the republic of ghana and um it means that um it's it's it falls under uh, the jurisdiction of the central region which has its own regional lands commission so if you want to register any land or have any um, official 
governmental transaction in respect of land situated within um, central region, you have to go to Cape Coast Lands Commission. So with the lease agreement that the community has over the 15 acres, we will now have to take steps to register the 15 acre land in the name of the community. Now, um, I, am, I am reliably informed that there, there, there are about um, 50 subscribers or so, 50 or more, I mean between 50 and 60, um, who have expressed uh, interest in, 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 in the land. I, I'm not very sure about the, the yeah, numbers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's 50 of us for, uh, it's 50 of us for phase one, but it breaks down to 50 plots that are sold um, as a combination of uh, different people. But okay. uh, 15 is for uh, phase two, but uh, everyone that's registered and set up for phase one, Okay. Uh, we basically just uh, look at all of the plots that, that were sold. So that's what we're looking at, the 50 plots, and then that's divided into whatever the, the uh, sum of the registration is. Uh, but I'll continue, uh, Richard, but uh, the total group of size of us is 65 because we have people for the new phase, and that's okay. how we was able to send uh, the money and all the setup for uh, phase two. Okay, all right, okay, that's fine. So um, at this point, we would have to now register the land the 15 acre land that has been leased to you for a period of 99 years for, for, for with, the, with the government. You see, um, I, somewhere last year in December, we, the Bomani and a, gr um, um, a group of people from your end uh, met the chief. I think that was the first time, that was their first meeting. That was in December last year. Yes. Uh, when, yes. Sorry, we met uh, the chief, and we also met yourself. Yes, sure. And um, per the laws of Ghana, um, foreigners cannot be given a 99-year lease. The highest number of years foreigners can have um, can, can can be leased a land, or the, an interest that they can have is up to 50 years. However. Nana took the decision that you are not foreigners. You are, you are back to where you belong. You are one of us. And so for that matter, you couldn't be treated as foreigners. So he would deal with you as if he's dealing with any other person. That is any other Ghanaian who is a citizen of Ghana. So he took the decision that instead of the, 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 the 50 years, he would grant you a 99-year lease and justify it anyway because um, it is not appropriate. Um, I mean, um, it, 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 it doesn't fall within the right scheme of things to treat you guys as foreigners. So he, he agreed to give you a 99 year lease on the land. And then all the documents that were drafted and duly executed by Bumani and, and his uh, colleagues, that's uh, your leaders, the, all the documents showed that the land that had been acquired as 99 years. The, the, the chief, uh, Nana, has signed a 99-year lease agreement between himself and Black Star Pan African community. So, as I was saying, now we, um, we had to, because of the number of plots, we had to engage uh, the surveyor to now demarcate the various, the, the, the 15 acres into the 50 plots because um, it, must, it must now um, take the surveyor to go on the ground and then pick the individual plots so that, um, let's say, Mr. Michael Morgan will now, if he subscribed to one plot or two plots, uh, uh, what we call a site plan will be prepared in his name so that it will reflect that 
the said person had acquired one plot or two plots. Now, our measurements for a, a, a single plot is 100 feet by 70. So, 100 by 80. Uh, pardon? It should be 100 by 80. Yes. Yes, but um, the, 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 the 180 used to be the, the former uh, uh, measurements. Now, the standard is 170. But with the land Nana, Nana gave, that's the 15 acres, would be able to get the 180. So you, you could see that Nana, Nana, Nana has been magnanimous by even giving us that 99 years. And then with respect to the, 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 the measurement for a, a single plot, we will have 180 instead of 170. So that, that is what the, 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 the surveyor, that's the work of the surveyor. The surveyor, because as it stands now, it is a, a big land, a 15 acre land. The surveyor will now go onto the land and demarcate the land into individual plots. Prepare what we call a site plan. Now, a site plan ought to um, be signed by um, the, the, uh, the surveyor is a licensed one, and then the regional surveyor must also sign on the said site plan. Now, um, after, uh, after the, the, that, the site plan, we will now have to prepare an individual, um, uh, what we call an indenture. Now, this is what will happen. Blackstar Pan-African community, they acquired a land or they, they were leased the land for 99 years. So technically or legally, they are the lessees. So they, they hold the primary 99-year agreement with the chief. Now, the um, Black Star Pan-African community would in turn transfer or what we call in law assignments, will assign a, a portion of the land to individual members or the subscribers. So Black Star Pan-African community acquired a 99-year lease. And then because it is a 15-acre land, after the, the demarcation by the surveyor, as a, 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 what we call an assignment, or an indenture will be prepared for each and every one of the subscribers so that they will have a separate legal document in respect of the land they have acquired. So um, if Bomani, um, uh, let's say, subscribe to two plots of land, or let's say one plot, a, a separate documents will be prepared with a site plan bearing Bomani's name, but at that point, the, the engagement or the legal documents will be between the community, Black Star Pan-African community and Bomani. So Black Star Pan-African community will be the assignor, and then Bomani will be the assignee. Bomani will be the receiver, or um, it's, it's an issue of um, uh, transfer. So transferee and a transferor. Is it because Bomani or the, 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 the community acquired the land and they are giving um, various plots of land to the members who subscribe? Now, with, with respect to the registration, at the Cape Coast Lands Commission, once you do a registration, your, your interest will be plotted and then it will be registered in your name. So we, we intend registering the whole 15 acres of land in the name of Black Star. It will be plotted and it will be registered and there will be a publication in the dailies, I mean, in our national newspapers to as, as um, uh, ample and um, a clear cut notice to the whole world that a Black Star Pan-African community has acquired 
15 acre uh, land at Jersey and they intend to register. So um, if you, you, you think you have an interest right to the, 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 the department, the government department, if you think um, you have an interest in the said 15 acres and then they will give you um, some number of days. Obviously, the land belongs to Nana. It is not incumbent. There is no um, third party who is claiming ownership of what has been given to us. So when the time elapses, now the, the, the Cape Coast Lands Commission will take steps to um, do their official duties and, and engagements and paperwork. And then the land will now be registered in the name of Black Star. Now, when the land is registered in the name of Black Star, the individual registration, you can also do an individual registration, but you see, before a land can be registered for you, you need something in Ghana we call a TIN number. Unfortunately, you would have to get into the system before you can have a TIN number, because before uh, any registration of land can be made in your individual names. Now, for now, we have taken steps to register Black Star Pan-African Community with the Registrar General of Ghana, that is the Registrar of Companies. So our, 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 our um, company registration is being processed. We are hoping that in the course of this week, it should be out or by next week, we should have it. And the, 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 once the, the, the entity is registered, that's Black Star Pan-African Community, is registered. Once it is registered, we'll be given a TIN number. The TIN number for the, for the entity, that's the community, who will now use that TIN number to proceed with the uh, registration of the 15 acres of land that has been leased to the group. So at this point, once the, the, the entity is registered and we go ahead to register, it is now in the name of Black Star Pan-African Community, which all of you are shareholders or you are, you are, you are members of, of, of the said group. So once it is registered and at the appropriate time, when the, the surveyor is done with the individual um, demarcation of land and then a site plan, individual site plans are prepared and then individual land documents are prepared for all of you. Then with the, the, the same numbers and then your particulars and everything here, we can now proceed to register, the, do a transfer. You know, the transfer has been done already. So you just go ahead to register that transfer that has been made. So it's just a change of name. At the Cape Coast Lands Commission, where your plot is, if they do a search, it will indicate that it belongs to the group. So per the documents you have, the Cape Coast Lands Commission will just change the, the name on your plots, on your individual plots from Black Star Pan African Community to, let's say, Mr. Michael Morgan. So, so, so then at that point, you have a valid legal document from um, in respect of the land from Black Star Pan African Community. And then you have gone ahead to register with Cape Coast Lands Commission. And your name will be entered into government um, archives so that anytime someone conducts a search on, on, on your portion of land, your name will come up. It will no longer be um, Black Star because Black Star, um, after the registration, they have transferred um, title on the land you acquired to you. So, and you have also gone ahead to do, um, um, to, to register or to do the transfer with them. You have gone ahead to register your, the transfer that was made to you or that was given to you by uh, Black Star. So, this is where we are now. Um, we are waiting for the for the registrar of companies to um, speed up to finalize our company registration, and then with that we can go ahead and register the the fifteen 
uh, acre land with the, the government. So there are two issues here. As it stands now, you have a binding lease agreement between your good selves and Nana. The land has been uh, leased to you. You are free to commence uh, development of the land and do whatever you intend to use the land for. You are free to do that. But uh, it is in our own interest to now register the land with the government. I'll give you an example. When, when we, we were about purchasing the land, the, um, another portion of the land had been acquired by an entity. And that entity went ahead to, to register it. So when we conducted the search, it showed that um, uh, part, uh, there, there is a portion of the land which does not fall um, into where we are seeking to buy. But when we conducted the, the uh, search, the entity that had registered its interest, its name popped up. So clearly, you see, it is, it is in our own interest that we will register and then have our names documented with the states so that it is, it is always there and nothing can erase it. So um, uh, the only thing that we are waiting for is the, the company registration for us to proceed with it because without the company registration, they cannot, the Cape Coast Lands Commission cannot go ahead and do the registration for us. We need the company registration because the, the, the land was procured. It was, it was, it was, it was, the, the, the agreement was sealed between Nana and a, 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 a company. So when once it is the name of an entity, we have to have it duly registered before we can proceed to have it registered with the states. And then the registration, as I said earlier, um, somewhere this week, or next week, we should um, be done with it. And then once we have it, then we can proceed to register the land in the name of Black Star Pan-African Community. Um, I think um, I've been reliably informed that that is the phase one. The 15 acres is the phase one um, acquisition. Now there are plans to acquire an extra 50 acres of land. Um, similarly, we've had discussions with the, 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 the chief. We have agreed on everything. And then um, even the, where the 50, the 50 acres and the already acquired 15 acres, which together will give us 65 acres. Uh, fortunately, um, it's all, the, the two lands are all lined at the same place. So um, we will have um, a vast land of 65 acres, which um, I think um, at this point, um, um, the, Mr. Kobna, the consultant, is um, working on it. In fact, he, he's, he's, he's done with the clearing of the 15 acres. And then with the 50 acres, the surveyor has gone onto the land to pick the, the, the 50 acres. He would now um, draw what we call a site plan for the 50 acres. He will take it to Cape Coast Lands Commission for that site plan to be approved. Now, the, 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 the site plan, which would be prepared by the Sovia, will be signed by the Sovia because he is a licensed Sovia, and then it must go to the regional land Sovia for approval as well. So, um, somewhere last week, I, I got in touch with him, and then we, we, we got him to kickstart work on the 50 acres. It is in progress. He has already gone ahead to pick the 50 acres. It's now in the process of um, drawing up the site plan for the, the, the for onward transmission to the Cape Coast Regional or the, the Regional Sovia who is at Cape Coast. If the, the, the law is that the, without the signature of the Regional Sovia, that site plan is deemed invalid and we cannot do anything with it. So, because the, the original surveyor is, is 
the one who is tasked with the primary responsibility of surveying all the lands within the region to make sure that the land does not fall within uh, maybe places reserved for um, um, government projects or land acquired for other national um, intentions or projects. So the, 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 it will go through several processes and then finally the Cape Coast, um, the regional surveyor at Cape Coast will now append his signature and then we will have um, a binding or a legally accepted uh, site plan. Then we can now use the site plan which has been um, executed or signed by the, the our surveyor and then the regional surveyor to prepare another lease agreement covering 50 acres. Now, the, um, the, there is another MOU that has been prepared, which I will send to um, Omani in the coming days. Another MOU covering the 50 acres that is in the pipeline or that is yet to be paid for or acquired. And the 50 acres, um, I think when we engaged Nana on the way to go, he agreed that payment should be made within 12 calendar months. So um, we, are, we, are, we are on it, the, the 50 acres, the price has been agreed, the time frame or the timelines for which payment should be made has been agreed. And then the, the size of the land and all those fine details will be captured in the MOU so that um, the group will also look at it if it is okay um, with them, they will execute their portion, send it to us, just as we did with the first arrangement. Then we'll have a binding um, agreement, or by, uh, I mean, an MOU, a memorandum of understanding in respect of the 50 acres. Now, um, I'm, I'm, I'm also aware that um, a deposit has been made for, for the uh, payment of the 50 acres, which Nana has duly accept, um, received the said payment. Um, he is not in town at the moment. Nana, the, the, uh, the chief of Jersey, who is Nana Haiti, also happened to be a, a judge, but his jurisdiction is in the Volta region. And Jersey is in the central region. So usually he comes around um, on weekends or on holidays or when he's on leave or when there is an emergency um, back at um, Jazzy where he needs to come and address. So um, he, he sits in his court at uh, somewhere, a town in the Volta region. So when he comes back, he will give me the receipt covering the, in, the deposit that was made for the, for the 50 acres so that we can proceed from there. So as it stands now, um, a, an MOU will be um, sent to Bumani in the coming days covering the 50 acres. The surveyor has already gone onto the land to pick the 50 acres so to add to the already or the existing 15 acres so that um, together we'll have a 65 acre land in all. Then depending on how it will go, um, the uh, consultant Kobna can um, start clearing the land if um, he, he, he's given the green light to do so. He can start uh, clearing the 50 acres as well. So at this point, um, by I'm hoping that in the course of this week, we would have the, the company registration so that we can now um, proceed with the registration of, of the, the, the 15 acre land at um, the Cape Coast Lands Commission. Now, now that we have the, the 50 acre, which is in the pipeline and um, we have um, uh, some sort of agreement with the chief to purchase the 15 acre, uh, the five zero acre in, in addition to the 15. Um, I don't know if with respect to the registration, we will do both the 15 and the 50 acres, that's 65 acres, or we would wait 
finish with the 15 acre registration and then go ahead at a later date to do the 50. That solely rests with you. Oh, perfect. Um, and let me just uh, chime in for just a few uh, seconds. As far as, uh, just to give clarity, as far as the 15 acres, uh, one five, um, each, um, each plot, we're going to divide that into the, the cost of what you're going to get from the Lands Commission. So that's another paperwork I wanted you to cover. That way, uh, we're, and I want uh, us to get something written in details. And also, I'm working on uh, a PDF with uh, the process of everything that Richard just talked about. Uh, so all of us could be educated on the process and, and the cost. But the cost of what all of us are going to pay is what's put together from the survey and the Lands Commission, and it's divided uh, by 50 plots. So if you have one plot, this is what you would pay. And if you have two plots, it's times uh, two. Uh, so that's how uh, that will work. But what we're going to do is uh, we're going to put everything in writing. Uh, that way, um, every individual will know uh, what their cost is to complete uh, the legal paperwork that Richard is talking about. Because what you paid for or what we paid for was basically land and also administrative costs. And what we did just to step our game up uh, beyond other people is to give you a cost where you, you, the land is covered, uh, administrative costs as far as this administration fees and administration work to legal work, to cons consultation, to a whole bunch of other things is covered, including land clearing in the price that you paid. So it's say, so when you see the price, it's a land costs and also administrative costs. And then not included is individual survey and also land registration. So that's what we have on the getting started. And uh, I know sometimes some of us are not on conference calls and things like that, and it's a lot of information, but that's why we had to sign off to make sure everyone understand that we we only paid for the land and the cost to do all the work. So now everything we're talking about is registration. And I never really got a price on what it costs for individual registration. I've called a bunch of people over the last uh, year and I've gotten costs from anywhere from 700 to 1500. And so, but then again, I realized it's all based on a bunch of different things and what you're actually getting in the package. So what we're gonna present and share, um, it comes out to about 4,000 CDs for registration and 2,000 CDs for survey. And uh, that's, um, so that'll be 6,000 per individual plots. So um, when you uh, do the math on that, it'll be about 1,100 US dollars. And that's to get all of those legal paperwork. So we wanna make sure that everyone has documentation on that process and that th those costs. And cause that's one of the costs I could never give anyone. And I even, I've always tried my best to just to try to give ideas that are costing it's in a high few hundreds uh, but um, to be clear and to be honest I just want to make sure that we put all the documentation together and so everyone knows that this is the cost because we'll, I want to make sure that we have everything presented a lot more clear for the individuals that are joining for the 50 acres that we planned out because most of what we did for the first 15 acres it's kind of like we worked a process and try to figure it out as we went along as best as possible and things like that so that's what I want to clear up with everyone. So if you have one plot, you're looking at about 1,100. If you have two plots, you're looking at 2,200. So that's what we have worked out uh, so far. And Richard, let me know if I'm clear about those things that we uh, I just talked about. Sure. I'm on the same page with you. Um, the, the registration, if, if the entire the assessment that was given to us at the Cape Coast Lands Commission for the 15 acres um, is 200,000. Now, with the 200,000, if we divide it by the 50 plots, it means one, one um, subscriber or one plot is paying 4,000 Ghana cities for registration. Now, um, I did say that the surveyor would now go onto the land and do the survey work by dividing the plots, each plot into 50 plots. And then he will prepare a site plan. That site plan will be signed by the, the surveyor and the regional surveyor as well. Because um, 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 the a site plan ought to be signed by the, the surveyor who, who did the survey work. And then a, a, a further endorsement from the regional land surveyor. So, the, and then the, we'll have to do a separate legal document, which we will call an assignment, a transfer 
And that whole process is 2,000 Ghana cities. So if you add the 2,000 and the, the 4,000, we would now have um, 6,000 to pay, 6,000 Ghana cities for, for, for the, the registration and the individual documentations that will seal your um, uh, um, evidence of ownership of the land. And that's per plot, but, and that's per plot family. So we always got to uh, say that because we have individuals who have uh, more than one plots. And yes. so we have tried to find the fairest way to work that out. And it's really no fair way other than individual plots. Uh, just like there's going to be certain things where we have as, as fees where it's, uh, it's either individual plots or, or, or family that's, uh, and things like that. So those are things that we just want to be clear on uh, as far as those things. Uh, so.